thank you so much for joining me for this full-length Pilates Reformer class, uh, focusing on exercises for tennis players and golfers. Today we're going to be working on um, sort of shoring up the inequalities in the size of the body based on the rotation or which side you mostly rotate from. We're going to be working on um, fixing the inequalities in our arm strength, leg strength. We're going to be working on both sides of the body equally. We're going to be getting a nice stretch in, working on our core strength for these activities. So to begin, I have my headrest up. I have my handles on. I have my foot bar up in the um, footwork position. We're not going to start with that, but that's where it is. And I have four springs on. I have the four springs that I use for footwork. Myself personally, I use two heavies, one medium and one light. That's two greens, one red, one blue on my machine. We're going to begin by straddling the machine. If you do not have the capability to straddle your machine, uh, sit to the side and just gently rest your hands in front of you. There's always an option to place your box in front of you right here between your legs like the foot bar is for us as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my femur in the hip socket Line my knees up so they track over my big toe. From there, I'm going to go ahead and stack my shoulders over my hips. If I have a mirror nearby, I can go ahead and check to make sure of that. Draw my belly button up to my spine, wrap my ribs, shoulder blades nice and wide. From there, I'm going to gently place my hands on the bar. I don't want to lean forward to do this. If I'm rounding forward, lean forward, I want to scooch my body towards the end of the carriage. I'm going to find that nice neutral position with my body. From there, this is going to be a tiny baby cat cow with just the upper body. Think of spine stretch, right? So to begin, I'm going to crease at the sternum right here where my 12th rib and my um, bottom of my sternum meet. I'm going to round forward to look down at my springs. I'm pressing down gently into my pinky blade edge. My shoulders are away from my ears and I feel the connection under my arms and my ribs. From there, I'm going to come back up to neutral and I'm going to lift my chest up to the right of the wall and the ceiling beat. My trainer, Katie Rowley, calls it lifting your necklace. From there, I'm going to come back through neutral, look down at my springs, keeping a nice connection with my core the whole time, and lift back up, showing off my necklace for the wall and the ceiling beat. One more, guys. And down, and lift. And now from there, I'm going to float my left arm up, and I'm going to side bend, pressing into that right hand on the pinky blade edge so that I'm not collapsing into my right side. Come back up, left hand down, and reach. We're going to be doing this series again. We're going to speed it up a little bit. Not so fast we lose control of our body or uh, we start flopping around in ways that are not, not beneficial for warm-up, but we will speed it up slightly when we do it the second time. One more, to the left. Good, now, right hand down, take your left hand, reach it up and over towards the ceiling, and rainbow your hand back. Tap the carriage if you're able to, back up and over. Our hips should not rotate on this. We're not getting much rotation. It's more of a cervical shoulder rotation, a warm up rotation, tiny rotation, Definitely nothing below your belly button should be moving. Just a little tap. Really hold everything together down below, downstairs, down below the belly button, right? Abs up and in, wrapping the ribs. Good. And now we're really going to rotate, right? We're going to take our left hand and rotate, looking back towards the uprights and back through center. Again, this is just a belly button above the belly button rotation. So think of bringing your ribs across rather than your lower body. And back through center and ribs across. Don't sway out your low back to get here. Make sure that you're lifting up and really finding a neutral spot. One more. Good. We're gonna put some weight in the heels of our feet next. And we're going to hover. Woo! Don't fall backwards like I just did. Hover, you can um, squeeze the carriage with your the carriage frame with your leg, with your calf if you like, and tap your booty one. Tap your booty two. We're going for three. We're going for four. We're going for five. From there, 
Gently place your fingertips on the foot bar. Scooch back if you need to. Now, again with a gentle cat cow. Just crease at the sternum look down. And bring your neck was up. We're not hovering too low, but really think of rotating the femur in the hip socket to warm up the turn up now, right? And here's three. And now we're going to do our side bend. So side bend. Oop, I side bend to the right first. Did I side bend to the left last time? Doesn't matter. We're going to do three in each direction. And find a nice flowy breath with this. <sighs> Don't let your hips shift. Reach up and over the barrel with the side of that body. And squeeze your obliques to come back up. Reach up and over the barrel and squeeze the opposite side of the to come up. Now, rainbow your left arm and back up and over. You're not going to find anything to touch in the hover. If you're unable to hover, go ahead and go back to the original position where you were sitting on <coughs> the carriage. One more rainbow and three rotations. And then we have three pulses and then we're done. So, Rotate to the left and center. If you're squeezing your calves into the frame, you're going to be able to maintain your hip square position with the foot bar or the side of the machine if you're facing that way. Still tucking our tail ever so gently so we're not swaying out the low back. One more rotation to the right and center. And now tap. Two. Three. Four, five, gently sit down, bring your feet up, come on back, high dress up optional, we're going to begin footwork, our uh, legs are in parallel, our heels are directly under our sits bones, right here underneath the booty, we're going to press it out, really pull up on those legs, and exhale back in and inhale, keep it going, find a nice, Position with your heels on the foot bar so you can feel the work on the back of the legs. Good. We're going to find a nice neutral spine here. Nice flat sacrum. Slight lift between the top of our hip and our 12th rib. Our ribs are going to melt into the mat. Our shoulder blades are nice and wide. Our ribs are pulling together in the front. Our sternum is soft. Sternum is soft. With nice wide collarbones. On the inhale, we press up, and on the exhale, we hollow out from hip to hip and feel our belly button melting to our spine. Now, squeeze your legs together real fast. Before we move on, we're going to rotate the femur in the hip socket, bring our legs to Pilates feet. Our toes will separate, our knees will separate, we'll squeeze it back together and rotate it open and squeeze, maintaining a neutral spine the whole time. I can really feel it in the outsides of my glutes. Good. Ooh, here's five. Nice stability exercise. Six. Don't just allow your legs to float. We want to rotate. Keep some integrity in your inner thigh. So you can really feel the work in your inner thigh still. Two more. Here's nine. And here's ten. Now slide your toes down to the foot bar. We're going to work in Pilates V now. We're going to press it out from the toes. And bring it back in. Resist it back in and inhale it out. Still working in a neutral spine, feel the rack from the inside of the knee to the outside of the glutes. Press energy through your feet and up the top of your head. Ooh, here's five. Six. Squeezing our heels together to increase that inner thigh work. Here's nine. And here is ten. Now. We're just going to slide back up to our heels and Pilates V and slide our heels wide to the outside of the foot bar. My feet are flexed. I'm not letting my knees go out further than my toes. My toes aren't going out further than my knees. My knees are tracking over my big toe. Again, we're going to press it out. Think of narrowing your pelvis here or tweezing your sits bones and resist to spring tension back in and press it out and squeeze up at the top of your legs in your booty, in your sits bones, in your pelvis and release. And squeeze. Release and squeeze. <sighs> Find a nice breath pattern here. It's warm here today for me. Ah, good. Here we go. One more. 
really pressing through the heels, back in. Now, don't change your legs, but come to the balls of your feet in a high heel position. The weight of the foot bar is going, between, going to be between your big toe and your second toe, roughly. So we're gonna press out, keeping a high heel, and resist the swing tension back in. And two, and resist, and three, and resist. Here's four, good, and five, six, seven. Now, we were talking earlier about finding the inequalities in our body. A lot of the ways we do that is with single-sided work. So after we do our footwork with two legs, we're going to do footwork single leg, okay? Good. And now come back in. Keep the high heel. Rotate your legs in parallel. Squeeze them together in the, in the center. We call this mega leg, or I've heard it called mega leg by instructors before. My legs are squeezed together the whole time. This is especially hard in various parts as you press out. Sometimes your knees want to separate. Keep your knees squeezed together the whole time to really work those inner thighs. Think of wrapping the glutes from the sides to the back and resist it back in. And press it out. Keep that high heel the whole time. And resist. As you press energy up through the foot bar, press energy up through the top of your head and find space between your joints. Good. There's five. Nice heavy sacrum. Don't allow it to shift and rock and roll as you press out and in. Good. Nine, ten. We're gonna come back in and go back out and stay out at the top. Now we're gonna lower down two, three, and lift two, three, and lower our heels to straight legs, and lift our heels to straight legs, and lower, and lift. Squeeze your booty more. Don't let it just hang out. Here's nine. One more. And now drop your left heel under as your right knee bends. Stay here for a second. Give yourself a nice calf stretch. Now lift both heels up. When both heels are up, drop your right heel under and your left knee will bend. There's more of a focus on the up here than the down. And now lift up. Now drop it. It feels great, right? But we're on the up. And drop your right and up. And left and up. Right, and up. You don't move again until both feet are up. And pause, and pause, and pause, pause, like a piston. Seven, eight, don't allow your hips to shift, really squeeze your glutes. One more. Drop your heels under, micro bend your knees. Oh, take just a second here. And now resist the spring tension in. Roll onto your side, come up to sitting. We're gonna change our spring tension down to two springs. I would recommend um, one red, one green, or I would go ahead and recommend uh, two greens. That's one medium, one heavy, or two heavies on my on my machine. Or, yeah, on, on my machine is the green and the red. But that's the spring tension I would recommend, all right? So. We're going to come to turn out to Pilates V. We're going to track our knee of our big toe, rotate the femur in the hip socket. Extend your left leg over the foot bar. Keep your hips square and now press out and in, keeping your leg there. Using your abs to do it. If you feel it's getting too much in your hip flexor, go ahead and diamond your leg slightly. That's a little bit. Don't go like this. Come on, guys. We're going to really work the abs here. Straighten it all the way. Okay, now 10, stay up there. Now lift your leg up to the ceiling. Now flex to lower and point to lift. One, two, we're going to six, three, four, good, five, six, and now across the body an inch and away an inch. Your hips should not shift at all. The box of your body is completely stable. So from your hips to your shoulders, completely stable. One more. Now back to the center. Now use your abs to pull your foot towards your nose. Don't tuck your tail. And down across and up for one. Now on these circles, 
I'm going to invite you to take your leg as far over the foot bar as you would like, but keep your circles narrow. So find the length, and it'll help you to keep your hips very stable while still finding that stretch and that length. We're reversing. Here's two, three, four, five, and six. Now extend your foot over the foot bar and bend your knee to come in. Place that foot back on the foot bar. Locate the Pilates V position. Make sure that the, the intersection of your heels where they're touching is going straight up through the midline of your body. Now extend your right foot over the foot bar in Pilates V. And we're going to press out and come back in. If you're looking for a little bit more work on this, you want a little bit more ankle articulation, ankle strengthening work, you can relax your ankle as you come back in, and as you press out, come to a high heel. And relax your ankle as you come in, and out to a high heel. So you're going to crease your ankle slightly, come in, and press it out on a high heel. Good. Here's nine. Option. Options, right? And ten. Now lift your leg up. Now flex to lower, still turn out in Pilates feet, and point to left. The entire exercise is in Pilates feet. Wrap your glutes on your left leg or your standing leg is pressing through the foot bar. Press energy out of your toes and energy out of your head. Now leave it up at the top, across an inch and away an inch. Don't allow this hip to rock or roll and not the hip, other hip either. Here's three, Ooh. four, here's five. Turn it out more so you can see the inside of your heel. And six, bring it back up to center, draw it up towards your chest your abs. Circle down, around, across, and lift. Again, keep the circles more narrow, but try to reach them further away from you while maintaining a neutral spine. <sighs> like if you're feeling this in your low back, you've gone too far with your leg. Make your circle smaller distance-wise as well as well as width. So reverse. One, two, three, four, Five, six, reach that leg over the foot bar and resist the spring tension to come back in. Good, we're gonna come up off to the side of our machine. Before we go ahead and put our boxes on, we're gonna go ahead and change our spring tension. We're gonna have three springs for this stomach massage series. I'm gonna lower my foot bar as well. We are gonna be more compressed because we are gonna be using our short box here as well. But the three springs for me are one heavy, one medium, one light. So one green, one red, one blue. We're going to go ahead and I have a sticky mat for safety purposes. I'm gonna put that on first. I'm gonna to measure to the end of my carriage by putting a hand's width from the edge of my carriage and placing the sticky mat starting at where that edge ends. I do this because I will have a hand's width from my um, tailbone to the machine, hopefully. With the box, it's, you know, depends on our body types, right? Our body shapes. From there, I'm going to bring my box on into a short box position. If this is too compressed for you, you can press out slightly, or you can move your carriage if you have that option. From there, I'm going to come to sitting on my machine. I straddle it just like I did in the beginning. For my body personally, I have a perfect distance from the edge to my sits bone. It's a little bit more than a hand's width, but I want to make sure that my sacrum is flat up against the box. So I'm going to place my feet on, heels together, toes apart, legs in a butterfly position. I'm going to pull myself up slightly to get a nice hip flexor stretch. I'm going to circle my arms down and around. They're going to be like C3PO hands on the plates. Press my hands into the front of the carriage. I'm not going to hang on for your life. I'm just pressing and gently, squeezing under my arms, elongating my neck, creasing forward at my sternum, just like we did for the opening warm-up, where we crease at the sternum, look down, abs up and in, acknowledging our strength. We're gonna press out on one, adjust my body slightly, which I should have done at the beginning, lower right heels on two, come back up to high heel on three, bend in for four, and press out on one, lower two, lift three, and on four. Here's three. With this four count exercise, we're gonna do this for the next two exercises. And then we're gonna to change to a two count exercise for the last two. 
out and lower and lift and in, out and lower and lift and in. Final one right here. Make sure you're not shifting across your sacrum. This is a nice stability exercise. Now, reach your hands up, open them, squeeze underneath your arms. I have a slight bend in my elbows. I'm pressing down through my pinky blade edge. You can think of lifting your necklace slightly to the crease in the wall and the ceiling. So, same sort of tiny baby upper body cat cow that we did for these first two exercises. We're going to press out on one, lower the heels on two, lift on three, and on four. Squeeze under the arms, feel that length. Don't crunch your head up and look at the ceiling. You just want a slight gaze up toward the wall and the ceiling. Good. I have a nice flat sacrum against my box. Nice control. And one more. Good. Come on back in. From there, we're going to lift our arms up. Biceps by your ears, hopefully. Don't arch over the box. It'll be very uncomfortable. We're going to press out on one and come back in on two. Think of squeezing the bottom tips of your shoulder blades to really open up and widen across the front and the back of your upper body. But really strengthen your back here. Abs are up and in. And out and in. Energy out of your fingers, grounding through your sits bones. Here's seven. We're going to do some rotation next. Bring your arms in front of you. We're going to rotate the arm back, leaving that back hip bone pressing into the box. You're going to feel if you shift here, right? So, a lot of the same exercises as at the beginning of class, just increasing the difficulty slightly, but this is something that we've already seen, right? <sighs> Belly button up is shifting, right? And you're shifting the ribs across. Let's do one more to each side. And final one. Good. From there, we're going to press out ever so gently, and we are going to take our medium spring off. So we have one green and one blue spring. Pretty light, right? We're going to bring our hands around. Crease at the sternum. Look in at our springs. I'm going to hover my foot off in a bent knee diamond, crunchy diamond position. Now I'm going to press out on one. One-legged work. Lower on two. Lift up on three. And on four. We have six of these. If you find that you cannot find this, that's fine. Find a nice stretch. Two more. But this is not the exercise for you. Try not to shift your hips off of here. You're going to be able to figure out where your inequalities are with this exercise, right? One leg will always, or one side will always be stronger than the other one. It's good to go ahead and identify those, so perhaps you can work on those inequalities a little bit more in other places. Find that position again. Flip that right foot off. Press out on one, lower on two, lift on three, and on four. Good. Keep it going. Whoa, my left leg is stronger than my right leg. Today. <laughs> here's five. And here's six. Good. Place your right foot back on the foot bar. Reach your hands forward and round over your legs, looking into your springs. Now press out. Stack your spine up, bring your arms with you. Lift your chest slightly toward the wall and the ceiling. Circle your arms. Now as you come in to the carriage, bending your knees, round forward, reaching over your legs. And press up, articulate up, slight back bend. Open your arms, <sighs> right over your legs. And lift. Kind of like a roll up almost, but better. And then, now we're going to reverse. So we're going to press out. Our arms are going to go wide. We're going to lift them up as we lift our necklace toward the wall of the ceiling. We articulate forward and bend over our legs. And inhale. <sighs> Run over our legs. Just slight little, nice little back work. <sighs> nice little stretch work. Now, place your hands on the foot bar. Walk your right foot out, the outside of the foot bar, and your left foot out. My arches are on the foot bar. Now, leaving my tail or my sacrum against the box, I'm going to round forward. 
Most likely my sacrum will peel off the box, but think of pulling it back to try to increase that stretch in your body. If you want, walk the balls of your feet down to the foot bar and you'll feel it down the back of your leg more. Now, bend in gently. Just a little gentle bend, not all the way. Bring one foot off to the side, bring the other foot off. Step off carefully off the side of the machine. Leave the foot bar where it is, in, the, in a lower position. We're gonna take our sticky mat. You can put it on top of the box. We're going to bring our box into the long box position for a swan series. We are going to go ahead and come, oh, my box is not centered properly. There we go. We're going to come onto our box. Our sternum and 12th rib or bra strap is going to be at the front of the box. We're going to draw our belly button up and in, wrap our ribs, squeeze our glutes and inner thighs. Don't have your elbows up here, guys. Drop them down and squeeze under your arms. Now prep, or, I'm sorry. Drop your spring down to one glute. That's one leg spring. Whoa, that would have been really heavy, right? Now press it out on one and back in on two. You don't want any bouncing in your shoulders. You really want to keep the movement in the underarms. <sighs> Lots of control here, right? Don't let it get into your neck. Two more. Can you leave your arm where it is? Leave your left arm where it is. Bring your right hand to squeeze in the front of the box like genie arms through your entire form. And now press. Don't allow your body to shift. It's one blue, guys. Go ahead and try to maintain that neutral spine and press and pull. Good. Now, place your other hand up here. Try not to bring it towards under your nose, right? Take your left hand, squeeze the form in the front of the box like genie arms to maintain a squared body and press and pull. Don't allow the movement to pop into your trap, your upper neck, upper shoulder. Let's do two more. And now, depending on the length of your body, you might have to adjust your body in the box. You're going to rest your forearms onto the, onto the foot bar, make a pillow with your hands. I have to scoop back to rest my forehead on my hands here. You might have to scoop forward, scoop back. Draw your abs up and in, wrap your ribs. We're gonna inhale. Our head is heavy in our hands. We wanna leave that same weight in our hands. Don't allow your, your, hip, your uh, hips to tend. We want to squeeze and make our thighs a little light. And now lift. And lower. Don't allow your head to disconnect from your hands. You want your back muscles to lift your head. Now lift. And lower. Now we're going to lift. We're going to drop our elbow, rotate to the left. Leave that left hip down, come back to your center, and lower. Flip your hands so the other hand is on top. Make your head heavy in your hands and lift. Drop your left elbow, look to the right, leave that right hip down through center, and lower. One more to each side. And lift. Think of length in each rear spine, creating space in your vertebra. Rotate to the left, and lower. The reason we're thinking of dropping the opposite elbow is so that we don't we don't rock and roll across our body while we'll rotate and down. Okay, go ahead and shake out your legs real fast. Whew. So we're gonna have to go ahead and probably shift ourselves back up or back to the position where our sternum and 12th rib are on the box. We're gonna do three four count swans, my, my favorite swans on the box real fast. So I'm gonna press out on one, don't hop in your hands, pull up, wrap your ribs, draw your belly up and in. Press out and in. So press out on one, lift on two, press out on three, squeeze your inner thighs more, draw your belly up to your spine so you don't feel anything in your low back. One more. And come back in. Now, bring your feet up into this position. Squeeze your heels together. It's like a frog, a flexed foot frog. Try to make your legs no wider. You don't want your legs hanging off like this. You want your knees no wider than the width of the box, hopefully. So we keep an inner thigh connection. 
Think of tweezing your seat here again. Tweezing your sits bones. We're gonna find a nice neutral spine, so we're gonna press and jump. We're gonna do some hand jumps. The reason we lifted our feet is so that there's no possible way that you can accidentally keep your upright, right? And press and come again. Don't let it come through your shoulders. We want it to come from our underarms. So nice long neck the whole time. Nice back strengthening. One more. Now come into the bumper. Take your right hand, press the forearm into the box. These are probably going to be pretty small. And jump. We're keeping it in the underarm, not in the trap. Here's four. And five. Good. Mine were very small. I'm not working in my neck, right? We're going to go with the right hand. We're really squeezing under the arm. Here's three. Here's four. And here's five. Good. Come back in. We're going to extend our legs. Draw our abs up and then wrap our ribs. We're going to float our, our left leg up to tabletop and lower. Right leg up and lower. Both legs up. Stay there. Extend your arms over your head. Biceps by your ears. We're going to do swimming on the box. So inhale. Swimming your arms and your legs. You're walking and rolling. And exhale. Inhale. Inhale. And exhale. Let's do two more breaths. Final one. Stop. Oh, allow your legs to fold over the box. Releasing your body. Allowing it to take a little break. Carefully step off to the side of the box and come up to standing. We're going to go ahead and bring the box up. Good. We're going to come relying on the carriage. We're going to be doing the series of five and the hundreds here. No straps, one blue. So if you use momentum, the carriage is gonna move pretty drastically, right? So let's go ahead and come down onto our backs. Head us up or down your choice. Rest your feet on the foot bar real fast. Go ahead and windshield wiper your legs. Allow your back hip to rock off, but try to keep your 12 ribs on, right? Nice little back release. Nice little hip release. You still a lot of back work, right? Okay. Fingertips are going to come up out of your sternum up to the ceiling. One leg will come up, other leg will come up. Inhale, exhale to curl up. Weight your tailbone. Reach your hands towards the outside of your ankles. Now, extend your left leg and pull it back in. And right leg and pull. Slide your legs against each other. So we're getting inner thigh work. And... We're getting some nice ab warm-ups, right? We don't need any more rotation at this point, so we're not going to reach for our leg. I find that sometimes when people do the rotation or the reach, they're rotating too much. But I don't want to see that today. We're doing a lot of rotation. All right, good. We're going to stay up on this one. Reach your hands towards your ankles. And now extend your legs out. Reach your hands up. Don't allow your arms to go back past your ears. Circle your arms to a T and exhale to pull it back in. And inhale to reach arms and legs. Exhale to a T and then pull your legs. After this, actually after scissors, we'll go ahead and take a break. Here's five. One more. Now legs up to the ceiling. Reach your left leg away and pull, pull, and switch. This is going to be the one where you're going to see your carriage moving. Keep your legs as straight as possible. Don't hold on behind your knee because that causes your leg to bend. Hold on anywhere from below your thigh to up on your calf to your ankle if you can do it. Don't allow your body to hop when you reach up, so don't use your body. So if you're using your body, your carriage is definitely going to move. Good. Bend your knees in. Rest them on the foot bar. Rest your head, neck, and shoulders. Go ahead and windshield wiper your legs again. Ah. Good job, guys. We're doing great. 
We're going to do uh, the double leg lower lift, and we're going to do elbow to knee, which is a lot of rotation, right? And then we're going to do the hundreds before we move on to some arm work. Okay, great guys. So, float one leg up to tabletop, float the other leg up. We're going to work in parallel now. We've been working a lot in the uh, Pilates V rotation for that inner hip strengthening exercise. We're going to be right here. So before we lift, we're going to find our head, our head in our hands, interlacing our fingers, thumbs long down our neck, elbows in our periphery. Inhale, exhale to curl up. We're going to lower one, two, three. Exhale to lift. And if at any point you need to lower your head, neck, and shoulders, please do so. Rejoin us if you're able to. If not, go ahead and stay down. Here's three. Now turn it out to Pilates V. Final three in Pilates V. Final one. Good. Bring it back to parallel into tabletop. We're going to, before we rotate, we're just going to drop our left elbow down and rotate towards the left. Don't move your lower body into the center. Drop your right elbow down. Rotate to the right. And one more like this on the other side. And then we can add the leg. We want to make sure we're not shifting. All we've done is taken the rotation for the swan and flipped it onto our back of the legs and tabletop. So extend your right leg, drop your left elbow. And back through center. I extend your left leg, drop your right elbow. Don't lose that curl up, curl up deeper. Drop your left elbow, extend your right leg. Drop your right elbow, extend your left leg. Curl up deeper, one more to each side. Keep breathing. All right, rest it down before we go into hundreds. We're going to gently rock from side to side again, guys. Good. So, we're going to do legs to tabletop. Fingertips coming up out of, this, up to, out of our sternum to the ceiling. We're going to inhale, exhale to curl up. Extend your legs. Pull them back into tabletop. Release the curl up. Curl it up and extend. Pull it and release. On this final one, we're going to begin hundreds. Curl it up and extend. And now begin pumping. Inhale, two. Three, four, five. Exhale. Two, three, four, five. Long continuous inhale. And on the exhale, imagine that you're fogging a mirror. Squeeze your glutes. Inhale. And exhale. Shoot energy out of your fingertips. Trying to reach the foot bar, guys. Drive your belly to your spine. If you're feeling your low back, lift your legs up towards the ceiling a little bit. Or bend your knees into a diamond or a hook position slightly. Hook is that spot between uh, parallel legs extended and tabletop. Final set. Exhale. Two, three, four, five. Hug your knees in. Rest your head and your shoulders. Go ahead and find your pace gently. We're just going to do some tail lifts or some reverse ab curls. We're just going to tuck and lift up. We're not going real high. We're not going to our shoulder blades. So you should be able to hold your pegs or your shoulder blocks like stinky socks, like my trainer Katie Rowley would say. Good. And print your spinal lift. One more. Go ahead and rock off to the side. We're going to keep one blue spring on, guys. This is going to be more ab work for the arms. So, I'm going to place my feet in my headrest. I'm going to have a hands width from the back side of my tail to the edge of the carriage. I'm going to find my springs. My springs are light, so I'm going to find hug a tree arms here. So I'm already a little bit away from the bumper, right? From there, I'm going to tuck my tail and articulate back and articulate back. Really find the space in between your vertebra. Should be a nice roll down and a nice roll up. Try to squeeze your legs as much as you can the whole time. Don't allow them to separate or whack together. Good, here's five. 
Stay back on this next one. And we're gonna lower lift. Good, one, two, oh, here's three, and four, here's five, here's six, here's seven, and eight. Now stay back. Now pulse back an inch and up an inch. One, two, squeeze your legs, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and articulate up. Go ahead and diamond your feet. Round over your legs for a moment. Oh. We're going to go ahead, take a couple nice deep breaths. Articulate back up. Find that hands width between your back side and the front. My toes dangle off of my uh, headrest in this, guys, just so you know. So I'm going to hug a tree my arms again, tuck my tail, roll back, rotate to the right and center. Rotate to the left and center. And the right and center. Don't let your shoulder do the work. Let your obliques do it. Squeeze the obliques inside you're rotating towards. This is an arm work right here. Now, rotate to the right and now pulse your leg one, two, it's tiny, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, through center to the left and pulse. Two, three, drop your belly to spine. Five, six, seven, Eight, come back through center, articulate up. That's going to end um, our articulating back work strictly today. When we do around the world, we are going to articulate and round back, but we're gonna do some flat back work now. So arms out in front of you, plug your shoulders down. Your arms should be coming out of your sternum, not up out of your shoulders, right? So drop them down and we're going to flat back, hinge and sit up and hinge back, flat back. And up. Now on this one, we're going to flat back. We're going to open our arms to a T and rotate to the right. And bring your arms back together as you sit up and a flat back. Now flat back and rotate, bring your arms open to a T. Really pressing on the backs of the shoulder blades and back out. Squeeze the bottom tips of your shoulder blades together to keep the movement out of your upper, upper shoulders or neck. And rotate. I'm holding on with my thumbs here. When I come back forward, I reach and I grab the handles with my fingers. But I'm not squeezing my forearms for dear life, right? Let's do one more to each direction. And then we're going to add the flat back and the round back all together for a nice around the world. Okay. Here's how around the world game is going to go, guys, all right? We're going to rotate back and flat back. As we bring our arms to face the uprights, we're going to drop our tail and find round back. But as we rotate the T to find the left rotation, we're going to come back up to flat back and then come back up to sitting tall. From there, we're going to go the opposite direction. We're going to do that three times in each direction. So we're going to rotate flat back, come to the T. As we bring our body through center, we're going to tuck our tail to a round back, squaring off our body with the uprights. Then we're going to rotate to the right, coming back up into flat back, and flat back, sit up tall. Arms to a T and rotate to the right. Tuck your tail, come through center to round back, flat back to the left, and back up through center, bringing your arms in front of you. End of the left T. Square off your body in a round back position, dropping your belly to your spine. Flat back to the right. Come up to sitting up tall. One more time in each direction. T flat back. Round back, squaring off your body. Flat back to the left. Oh, whoa! I feel this under my arm strongly, guys. Ready? One more. And then we're going to do the butterfly stretch over the legs. T flat back to the left. Square your body off with the uprights. 
by the C-shaped curve. Rotate to the right and come up to sitting up tall. Go ahead and peg your straps real fast. Butterfly your legs. Run over your legs. Oh. Take a couple nice deep breaths here. We're going to do some teaser work. Now articulate up. Our feet are still in a headrest. Our toes are hanging off the edge. We are not using straps for this. So if you're more comfortable, please feel free to do it on the mat. From here, we're going to reach our hands in front of us. Tuck our tail, articulate back. Again, if we use momentum to lift ourselves up in this, we're going to go flying, right? Don't hang your head in the, uh, in the springs area. You're going to get your hair cut. Tuck your tail. Roll up to a flat back body position. So don't sit up tall. If we're in a flat back hinge back position, tuck your tail, articulate back. Inhale, exhale to lift, float your right leg up. Leave your right leg up as you tuck your tail, start to roll back, and then bend your knee to come down. We're gonna do the left leg now. Lift your left leg up, squeeze the bottom tips of your shoulder blades, tuck your tail, articulate down, bend your knee. The more your legs are squeezed together, drawing towards midline, the easier it should be not to rock and roll. Now, inhale, exhale, lift both legs. If you're able to, Leave both legs lifted as you articulate down, keeping them there. And now, teaser three, roll back up. Carefully place your feet on the foot bar. Scoot back, butterfly your legs again. Round over your legs to release in your low back. We are going to be doing some jumping on one blade spring on the foot bar. I don't normally like to jump on the foot bar, but I do like the level of control it forces you to have. We're going to be jumping in parallel and then Pilates V. But the first thing that we're going to do, because we are jumping from the foot bar and the spring tension is so light, is we're going to be doing just 10 presses out and in, connected to the foot bar, and then 10 jumps. And then in Pilates V, 10 presses, and then 10 jumps. So we're going to go ahead and lift our foot bar back up to the footwork position. The lower it is, it's going to be much harder to maintain your position. You'll probably feel it in your back, right? We don't want that. So we're going to come to parallel on our toes. Now, like we were talking about earlier, where we start from a relaxed ankle position, we're going to start from a relaxed ankle position here, and then we're going to press out to a high heel. Really finding the weight in our sacrum and come back in. Relaxed ankle, press out high heel. Don't allow your body to jump. Squeeze your glutes. Here's five. And six. Here's seven. I feel a lot of hamstring work here because the spring's so light. So this is nice, right? Let's do two more. The trick to the jumping is going to be going small and then getting larger. You don't want to go so big that you can't find the foot bar. Do I think that one spring will, blue spring will hurt you? No, but it, it is a little scary, right? So, and now come back in. Now, if you're able to, go ahead and lift your head up so you can see. Rest your head in your hands if you'd like, and now tiny jump. And tiny jump. A little bit bigger tiny jump. Let's say a medium jump. And a medium jump. And do whatever you want from here on out. It's five, four, abs up and in. Three, two, one. Good. Rest your head, neck, and shoulders. Bring your feet to Pilates V. Relax ankle, press it out to a high heel. You might have to adjust your feet from here. I can keep a much wider Pilates V when I'm not jumping and pressing out because uh, my rotation is much stronger when my knees are bent. But 
Normally about three fingers distance between your big toes is really good, right? Relaxed ankle, high heel. Hamstring curling. Good. Nice leg work here. Here's 10. Before we begin jumping, go ahead and come back in. Lift your head, rest your head in your hands if you'd like, and tiny jump. And tiny jump. And a little bit bigger than tiny. And medium. Squeeze your glutes. Try your belly to your spine. And medium. And now go where you want to go. Here's five. Four. Ooh, my belly twitch. Three. Here's two. And here's one. Good. Go ahead and come back in. Bring your legs up to the ceiling. Walk your hands up your legs. Flex and point your feet for a nice stretch. Ooh, go ahead and lift up your tail if you'd like for a nice back stretch. All right. We're going to come down onto our sides. Press ourselves up to sitting. We're going to be doing side arms. So, I'm going to come to the middle of my machine. We're going to be doing some rotational work on this as well. So you don't want your arms going behind you. You want to keep your arms directly in front of the middle of your body, which is at your sternum. So we want to line up our knees with our front shoulder blocks so that the rope doesn't rub us too much across the front either. We are using one blue here. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to stack our shoulders over our hips. Place your hands on your hips and squeeze it up. Lift your body up as if you're being lifted up whoop, in one long position as if there's a board attached to your back. And lift and lower. If you have a mirror nearby, you should see it lift up a lot of glute work here. Think of a bridge. One more. Now, stack, make sure your shoulders are stacked over your hips, your hips are stacked over your knees. Reach down, grab your strap. Take it in your opposite hand, so your hand is closest to the foot bar. Go ahead and leave your hand as closest to the uprights on your hips. Now, just bring your elbow to the side and bend it back in, like a pirate, like a hoy. If this is enough for you, stay here. If you'd like some more, Without bending your wrist, bring your arm so that your uh, hand is at your shoulder and bring it back down and bring it up and down. If you'd like more, bring it up and extend your arm without moving anything in your body. Across to the shoulder and back down. So we're hitting the pirate, the shoulder, the extend, the shoulder, the pirate, and down. We're hitting all three movements we just add it on weight. If you feel as if this is too heavy, move towards your, your shoulder blocks. If you feel that this weight is too light, move towards your springs, but do not move off the carriage, right? Okay, here's seven. And here's eight. Now, you're probably wondering why we did all those uh, lower lifts earlier. Well, here's why. Go ahead and sit back on your heels. We're going to put the strap in our shoulder block hand and pull it so that the handle is right in the middle of our sternum. We're going to take our foot bar hand and gently rest it across the top. This is our beginning ending position right here facing front. We're never going to rotate our hand further back. We're going to lift up. After we lift up, we're going to rotate towards the front edge corner of the machine. Come back to center and lower down with the flat back body and flat back lift and then rotate, leaving that back hip where it is, and lower, and squeeze to lift, and rotate, and center. One more, just like this. Now, adding on is just really blending all the movements together more. But as you do this, do not let your hip, your back hip, rotate with your body. You want to keep it back as you rotate, and sit back, and lift and rotate. Make sure that you're really stacking your shoulders over your hips, too. One more. Good. Now from there, we're going to peg our strap real fast. We're going to keep doing some arm work, but we're going to do it in the quadruped position. I'm going to come into the quadruped position. 
I like stacking uh, my hands on top of my shoulder blocks. Some people like putting them on their headrest. Don't go like this in your back and either position. Draw your abs up and then create a nice flat back position. I prefer the shoulder blocks because you're able to put more weight on the meaty part of your hand and not break your wrist. I'm going to take my handle in my right hand and I'm going to press back in a long lever tricep press. Eight, seven, control it out, control it in. No bouncing. And now we have five, four, three, two, one, stay at the top, and now short lever tricep press, bend the elbow, and press back for eight. No swinging. If you get slack in your rope, you've gone too fast, and use momentum. Oh, my face itches. <laughs> Too bad, so sad. All right, on this next one, stay up and pulse up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It would be a tiny pulse. Your shoulder should not be going like this to make it happen. I want it all right here in the tricep. So it's a tiny spasm, let's call it, right? All right, we're gonna go to the other side, guys, and then we're gonna be doing some standing side controls and we're gonna finish off with some feet and straps and some stretching. All right. So again, I'm in the middle of my machine here. I'm sitting back on my heels. I've lined up my knees with my front shoulder block so that I'm not going to rub the front of my body with the rope. And now I'm gonna lower left. I want everything in my body from my head to my tail to lift up at the same time in the same line and lower. It should be perpendicular with the ceiling. So like a T. And lift, squeeze those glutes. Think of a bridge. And one more. Stay up there. Find your strap. Bring it to your opposite hand. Or your foot bar hand. Your, uh, your shoulder block hand will be on your hip. And now we're just going to do the pirate pole. One. And two. And three. Now, if that's enough, we're going to come up to the shoulder and lower it back down. So through the pirate pull to the shoulder and lower. One more. And then we're going to do the full unsheath the sword. Feel free to go back to any variation that you like this. We're going to pirate, shoulder, unsheath the sword with a straight wrist. Shoulder, pirate, unsheath. Okay, all three movements. Try to keep your wrist as straight as possible. Try to make the movement come from the back of your shoulder and underneath your arm, not your neck. Stack your shoulders over your hips and your hips over your knees. Squeeze your glutes. Wrap your ribs. Belly button to spine. One more. Good. Now we're going to sit back on our heels. We're going to take our hand that's at the shoulder blocks. Put the strap in it, hooked with our thumb, bring it to the center of our body where our sternum is, take our, our uh, foot bar hand and gently rest it over the top. Now we're going to squeeze it up. While we're squeezed, we're going to rotate towards the front corner of the machine, leaving our shoulder block hip back and not letting it rotate with us. Come back to center, sit back. Now, flat back, sit up. Then rotate and through center and back. We have two more just like this, and then we're going to blend the movements a little bit more if we're able to. If not, feel free to keep doing this variation. Really squeeze it under the arm to keep the strap in the center. And now lift and rotate. Keep that back hip back. The movement will not be as big as you think it should be, but really ring out those obliques. Two more. And then we'll move on to the triceps. And lift and rotate and back to center and lower. Good. Go ahead and take your strap real fast while you go ahead and find the quadruped position. Again, on the shoulder blocks or on your headrest, up to you. You can also place your hands on the carriage if you'd like. I'm going to find my handle. 
draw my abs up and then so I'm not swinging out my low back, hurting my back. And I'm going to long lever, press my arm back, keeping my shoulders square with the carriage. Here's three, abs up and in. Think of a slight tuck on your tail. Not huge, but so that you don't sway. Now, keep your hand up at the back and we're gonna short lever tricep press. Eight, don't allow the springs to get any slack. Here's six, keep breathing. Four, again we're gonna um, spasm pulse our tricep, good. Not a big movement. And now pulse. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and lower. You couldn't even see my arm in the camera, guys. It, it's just not gonna go up that high. It's not gonna pulse that much. For some people, definitely might, right? But for me, it does not do that. All right, guys, we're going into standing side controls. I'm gonna get my standing platform. One or two sticky mats, whatever you prefer for uh, safety purposes. I use one sticky mat on my standing platform. I'm gonna change my spring tension to one medium spring. For me, that's one red spring. If you cannot stand up on the platform without using a support, you have to be able to stand on the platform and be able to lift your leg onto the carriage without using your hands, basically. So I'm gonna put my hand on here. Otherwise, it is not safe for you to do this at home. Go ahead and squeeze the inner thigh, inner, inner thigh to bring the carriage in. Place your weight in your standing platform leg and press out and pull. One, two. We're in a flat back hinge position, tweezing the bottom tips of our shoulder blades. My knees are bent. I have a lot of weight in my standing platform leg. Make a diamond with your hands and place them on your sacrum so you can make sure it's not shifting. Don't use your body weight to move the carriage. Squeeze it in. Shift your body weight so now my body weight is over my carriage leg. And press and pull. Don't let your carriage leg move. It's a lot of isolating the glute work on the standing platform leg. Five. Six, seven, eight, ooh, here's nine, and here's ten. Now, stand up. That was one sided leg work, right? We're going to do two sided. Bring your arms out to a T. Think of pressing down on an imaginary pole with slightly more pinky weight. So don't just go like this with your hands and put your pinky blade edge down. Think of giving me more weight. And now press it open and resist it back with your outer glutes. And now press, abs up and in. Try to keep your shoulders stacked over your hips. Good. This is not really inner thigh. It's a unilateral leg press at this point. It's a little heavy for inner thigh, but it still feels nice. More underarm work, so a little bit more pressure in your pinky blade edge rather than your thumbs. Squeeze it in with your inner thighs. One more. Nice. Now, bring it into the bumper. Put your weight in your standing platform leg. Step off the back. Walk around to the other side. We're going to be doing the same series on the other side before we go to feet and straps. Standing platform foot up first. Carriage foot up second. Bend at the knees, squeeze your inner thighs, hinge at the hips, flat back, tweeze the bottom tips of your shoulder blades, put your uh, hands on a diamond on your sacrum, put your weight in your same platform leg, and press with your carriage leg. Like Ten. Nine. Bend your knees more. <sighs> Try to keep a straight line from the tip top of your head up through your tailbone, kind of like what we were just doing for, um, for the, uh, the lower lift with the side arms. Good. Here's four. Here's five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. One more. Keep that weight in the carriage leg. In the carriage. 
shoulders leg. Now squeeze in with your inner thighs, stand up. Squeeze your glutes to open up the front of your hip flexors. Wrap your ribs, shoulders over your hips, hips over your ankles. Arms to a T, slightly in your periphery. Give me a little bit more weight in pinky blade edge. Press it open. Resist it close. Ten. Don't allow your hips to shift back. Make sure that you're really only going as far as you can with your flexibility without allowing your body to move around. Abs up and in. Let's do three more. Here's two. One more. Now squeeze the carriage in with your inner thighs. Place your weight in your seated platform leg. Step off the back of your carriage leg. Let's go ahead and get rid of those standing platforms, guys. Good job. From there, we're going to go ahead and bring our foot guard back up. We're going to add a light spring or one blue spring. So now we have on one medium, one light. That's one red, one blue in my machine. And I'm going to switch over to my feet straps. I'm going to come onto my back. I'm going to press out with my legs. Place one foot in a foot strap. Press the leg straight. Place the other foot in a foot strap. Press the leg straight. Rotate my feet in Pilates feet. Bring it into a frog. You can come in as far as you want, but don't lift your tail to do it. So wherever you can stay with your tailbone flat, nice flat sacrum neutral spine is great. Press out and pull in. <sighs> Good job, guys. Here's three, four, we're going to 10. Squeeze it out, squeeze the inner thighs. I like to pull in further than tabletop because I like the stretch on the backs of my glutes. I understand why people don't do it because you're tailless, but if you can do it and you can't find that stretch, it's really nice, right? Now, we're gonna come back in halfway. We're going to lower or lift our legs slightly, just an inch, until we can really feel in the glutes. And now leave the strap sort of in between your knees if you're able to, if your machine lets you do it. Squeeze them together as you close your legs to parallel. Now leave your heels together, separate your toes, separate your knees to Pilates feet. Think of closing the book and opening it. Three. The added, uh, the benefit of the, the uh, ropes here I said it gives you a little bit more inner thigh work, right? Now open. Now stay open and bring the straps to the outside of your knees. Now squeeze it together. Now press on the straps to rotate the femur of the hips up to open the book. Now you're getting more outer leg work, right? Inner thigh squeeze and rotate to open. And squeeze. And four. Make sure that you can feel it in your glutes strongly. Good. And now, ready? Bring the straps to the back of the inside legs because we're going to lift in a diamond shaped position. Press from the back of the legs and the glutes to lower back down the working level and lift. And press to lower. Leaving a nice neutral spine, nice flat sacrum the whole time. Here's four. And five. Here's six. Seven. We're gonna do a little bit different lower lift after this as well. So right here. Now lower. Now Sam and turn out in body seat and extend your legs. Now we're going to bring our legs up to the ceiling, but we're separating them to the width of the reformer. Now, as we press back down, extending energy out of our feet, we're going to bring our legs back together. And now separate as you lift up to the ceiling, no wider than the width of your former, and squeeze it back down. This is going to end up looking like a V. So they're together, and now they're separate. And now they're together. Good. Here's seven. 
After this, we have five circles in each direction. And squeeze, keep it rotation the whole time. One more. And now lower it, squeeze them together, lift them up together in the center. Open and down and squeeze and lift. Let's keep them within the width of the machine today or the width of the reformer, just like we just did for the V lower lift. It's going to end up looking a little bit more like a rectangle than a circle. Now we're gonna reverse, we're gonna lower, open the width of the reformer, bring it up and squeeze and lower, open, Lift and squeeze. Here's three. And four. Good. And five. Now, leave your legs up to the ceiling. Hold on to the tape. Pull your feet towards your nose. Open your feet wide in a straddle stretch. Place your hands on the tape and you can gently pull that down a little bit more if you'd like to increase that inner thigh stretch. Bend your knees. Come up with your feet, try to stamp the ceiling first. Bring them together in a butterfly position. Pull them in towards you. Now, if you have the flexibility, go ahead and drop your feet down towards the springs. We're going to reverse those stretches. We're going to bring it up to a butterfly. Hold it here for a second. Now we're going to bring just our shins out and then we're going to extend them out to straddle. And now lift your feet up through the center. Take one foot out, find the foot bar, and take the other foot out and find the foot bar. We're going to do a psoas stretch and an inner thigh stretch and a figure four stretch. And let's face it, none of us stretch enough. I have reduced my spring tension to one light spring. That's one blue spring on my machine. I'm going to come to the other side to do it this way first. I'm going to take my left leg or my outside leg and line it up so that my foot, my toes are lined up with this end of the one. I'm going to tuck my tail, place my knee on the carriage and my foot up against the shoulder block, my toes are tucked. I'm going to square my hips and squeeze my glutes, say of tucking my tail, to extend out the front of that right hip and release. And now tuck, really find that stretch by squeezing your glutes. If you need your foot barts here for support. And now we're going to tuck. Stay here. Now begin to press down into an eaves lunge. And now press it back for a split. Now take your outside hand, for me that's my left hand, float it up and side bend. If you're able to, if not, go back to whichever variation worked last for you. Come back out of the side bend, find the foot bar, bend your front knee to ease lunge, come back out to that glute squeeze tuck psoas stretch, and carefully step off. From there, I'm going to find myself in a Pilates V with my toes near the hookup for my springs. I'm going to place my other foot up on the carriage with a straight leg. I'm going to bring my hands down on the carriage for an inner thigh stretch. From there, I'm going to press the carriage out. If you feel it in, your, in the inside of your knee, please come up, you've gone too far for your body. And now, begin to tuck your tail and come back up. So you're going to come back up into a Round back. When I press out, I am in a flat back. You might not be able to find that. If you can, that's great. And now come back up. And now we'll do one more on this side before we go to the other side for these stretches. Find the breath here, guys. I find that I don't get enough inner thigh stretches, right? Carefully bring your foot off the carriage, go to the other side. I'm going to take my outside leg, which for me is my right leg. I'm going to line up my toes with the top of the wood on my carriage. Bring my left knee up to the carriage, tuck my toes, bring my foot to the shoulder block, bring my knee down. 
If I have a mirror, I'm going to make sure that my hips are straight. I'm not going to allow my hips to go out either, by the way. And then I'm going to squeeze my glute, think of tucking my tail to stretch out the front of my hip. And release. And now again, this is going to be more of something that you feel deep inside of your body than you're going to see, right? All right, one more, and then we're going to go to Eve's lunge. So go ahead and squeeze and hold. Find the foot bar, and then press back. And do an Eve's lunge. Now straighten your front leg to find a split. Take your outside hand, from this my right hand, float it up, and slide bend towards the opposite side of the machine if you're able to. Bring your shoulder away from your ear. Come back up. Find the foot bar. Bend your knee to come in. Come up out of the eaves lunge. Tuck your tail. For the last so as and come up. Now, I'm going to find uh, a Pilates V. My right leg and the toes are going to be up where the connection is for my springs. I'm going to place my other foot up in a Pilates V position with my, uh, the ball of my foot really is in that crease for the headrest and the carriage. That's where I'm able to find it. Perhaps you find it somewhere else or you're not able to find it there. No big deal. I'm going to reach down with a round back by the edge of my carriage. I'm going to press it out. I'm going to be in a flat back from here personally. If you're still rounded, that's great. Find that inner thigh stretch if you're feeling it in a weird spot on the insides of your knees. Go ahead and come up. Let your tail roll up. We don't want the stretch to be there necessarily. We want a nice inner thigh stretch. So maintaining a nice inner thigh stretch. Good. Woo! Tuck your tail and roll up. From here, we just have a figure four stretch after this last inner thigh stretch, right? And tuck your tail and roll up. I'm going to come back around to the other side of my machine. I'm going to plate my feet flat on the floor. I'm going to bring my left leg up first. Personally, whichever leg you like the most, great. It's above my knee, above my ankle, so I don't have it on the joints. I'm going to bring my hands around. And my, with my fingertips tented, I'm going to press up. If this is not enough for me, I'm going to hinge forward an inch. Don't round back. We're really going for a different sort of figure four stretch here. One more deep breath. Sit up tall, release the stretch. Now, take your other leg above the knee, above the ankle, we'll cross. Hands reach back and around. Tent your fingers, sit up tall. Don't flare out your ribs, just sit up nice tall with a nice flat back. Hinge forward an inch if you need it. Take another deep breath. Sit up tall, release the stretch. Give me a nice inhale, arms up to the ceiling. <sighs> Exhale. Thanks so much for joining me. If you have any questions or need any modifications, please feel free to reach out. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks.